Okay, a harmonic oscillator has an angular frequency of omega and an amplitude of A. Now, the magnitudes of the displacement and velocity, I want to know that, when the elastic potential energy is equal to the kinetic energy. All right, so we know one fact here. We know that these two will be equal at some point while this thing oscillates. So if x is equal to 0, this would be our equilibrium point. We also know u here will be equal to 0. At, am at one amplitude, we will know that kinetic energy is equal to zero and elastic potential energy is going to be at a max value. Okay, which will also equal one half k times a squared. All right, at the negative amplitude, those pieces of information will hold true. In the middle, we know the spring potential energy is equal to zero, but k is going to be one half mv squared, which will also be at a max value. All right, so let's have a look at this. All right, if we look at a bar chart, we know that us plus uk at this point, they're referring to in the problem, we know that these two are going to be exactly equal. And that, you know, depending on where we look in here, and when the displacement and the velocity. Well, let's deal with the displacement first before we deal with the velocity. So the displacement is when us is at a max value. So it's either going to be at the one of the two amplitudes. And we know that these two added together will equal u max. So we know that spring potential max is equal to us plus k. Now, one piece of information that's really helpful here is this. If these two are not only equal to each other at this point, we could also say that the amount of K is the same as the amount of spring potential energy. So we can look at this and say, well, instead of having this K in here, I can have US plus US because since the amount of kinetic is the same as the amount of potential, it's essentially the same value, is equal to the spring potential energy at the maximum value. In other words, twice the spring potential energy will equal twice uh, will equal the maximum spring potential energy. So now you're wondering how does this help? Remember, the problem is asking for us to figure out <coughs> um, the displacement when the elastic potential energy is equal to the kinetic energy. So in looking for the displacement, x will be my displacement from the equilibrium point, and we know that this is going to be one half k times the amplitude square when the potential energy is at its maximum value. So the halves will divide out, the k's will divide out, okay, and we're going to be left with 2x squared is equal to a squared. Well, to figure out that position, we have, divide both sides by 2, we have a squared divided by 2, and then when you take the square root, x is equal, get this back here, x is equal to a divided by the square root of 2. Alright, so to figure out the velocity at that point, so we can look back to this same situation here. We have the spring potential energy is equal to the kinetic energy. Instead of substituting in for the kinetic energy, we can substitute K as kinetic energy in for the spring potential energy. So we're going to get 2 times the kinetic energy is equal to the maximum spring potential energy. So that means we have 2 times 1 half mv squared is equal to 1 half k times a squared. All right, now looking at this, our halves can divide out. Okay, and to solve for v, we have k a squared all over 2m. All right, now, um, then we're going to have to square root both, both sides. And we will end up getting k over m, the square root, 
times a all over the square root of 2 is equal to v. Now you're probably wondering why did I write it like this. Well, if we look at, they're asking us to express this in terms of the angular velocity, which, okay, we're going to actually need to figure out what the angular velocity is and relate it to m over k. All right, so the reason we have this out here is if I rearrange this so that I have radical k over m is equal to 2 pi over t, well, omega is equal to 2 pi over t, which is equal to radical k over m. So ultimately, this here is omega. So v, when the two energies are equal to each other, is equal to omega times a over radical 2. As to how often this occurred each cycle, well, if we look at, let's say, this point here, which is a over radical 2, and this point here, which is negative a over radical 2, all right, and we look at what happens during one cycle. So the object starts here, gets faster and faster, then slower and slower and slower, stops and turns around, and then slows down. We find that it's going to happen one, two, three, four times, all right, in both cases. So this will happen four times. All right, C, just omit.